I'm Ashton Addison from Event Chain for Investment Pitch Media and FinTech News Network. And today on Blockchain Interviews, we have Brady Liu, co founder and CEO of Every Token. Brady, thank you so much for coming on the show. Welcome. Thank you. It's my pleasure to be here. Awesome. If you would just start a little, a little bit with your background and how you got into the financial industry, that'd be much appreciated. Oh, sure. So um, I studied uh, engineering in college, actually, and then I went to the States, studied finance as a master's degree. Um, naturally, I, uh, I, I, I find a um, finance job after graduation. Yeah, that's a little bit about myself. That's awesome. And what got you into the cryptocurrency industry from finance? Oh, yeah, sure. Uh, as I mentioned, because I have both engineering and um, finance background, so it's much easier for me to understand both the technology and the economy sides of the uh, blockchain, right? Uh, also, I, um, I worked in the uh, financial industry after graduation. That was uh, 07. So I saw the whole process of financial crisis in uh, 08, the largest hits uh, in, in, in the last decade. So uh, I see all this happening uh, before. And then uh, I, I, I actually quit the um, finance job because I'm not a typical nine to five person. I would like to do some entrepreneurship. So I actually did several uh, companies uh, before blockchain. Uh, I sold two of them already. Uh, that, but, the, but the problem I found my uh, previous venture is that it hits limitation, hit the uh, uh, selling very quickly because it's very traditional business, offline business. So that's why I have to look for something uh, scalable. So the, uh, I decided to um, jump into the internet. Uh, so I invest, I invest and co-founded a uh, mobile game company at my last venture before blockchain. But the problem is, we had a very good product, uh, but the traffic is all controlled by the big giants like Alibaba, uh, Tencent in China. So we have to purchase the traffic from them. But it's so expensive; it's even more than than the uh, the proceeds we get from from the uh, from the game. So we decided to shut it down. That was the only um, venture I, I really feel. So I started to think where else that I can find a scalable business, but also beyond the internet giant control. So then I really studied a lot about blockchain. And uh, as I mentioned before, I had both uh, academic and uh, I have both engineering and finance background. So it's easier for me to believe in uh, this blockchain that can give us the new opportunity. That's awesome. Thank you, Brady. So as you transition into now co-founding every token, what can you tell us about every token and the problems that it's solving in the industry? Sure. Uh, we started uh, to uh, build our platform since last December. At that time, uh, the infrastructure, meaning the public chain, is really uh, lacking. As we all know, uh, Bitcoin, Ethereum, they, are, they have very low performance. Uh, CPS is like a single or double digit. It's not really for uh, highly commercial use. So for us, every token is the world's first uh, token customized public chain. So we are trying, what we are trying to solve is that we, we are trying to deal with tokens and token economy best. So what we look at token economy, basically today, people all look at the coins. The coins are pretty much the uh, cryptocurrencies we look at the today. And they contains uh, little value, which pretty much like 200 billion uh, recent, uh, but recently dropped a lot as well. Uh, it's so little compared to real human assets and equities. And what we believe is that the uh, real human fortune will be tokenized, so the value could be easily circulated from off-chain to on-chain. So that's why we build an infrastructure to facilitate this happen. So we have three key innovations. So first of all, we have token-based booking method. As we all know, Bitcoin using uh, UTXO to do uh, ending double spending. And then uh, Ethereum EOS is using uh, account-based bookkeeping method because they are a platform of a smart contract. So the way smart contracts interact with each other is through uh, accounts. So for us, we want to deal with tokens best natively. So we have the token-based bookkeeping method. And we wrote a XAMI paper on this. If you're interested, I can, I can send it to you later as well. 
Um, and second of all, the second innovation would be we use safe contract to replace the traditional smart contract layer. Smart contract is flexible, but so vulnerable, as we all know, it happened, so many vulnerabilities happened before. So lots of uh, millions and millions of dollars were lost or stolen before because of these vulnerabilities. So we use safe contract. So external applications, they use our core functions by API calls, simple API calls, and it's really good for normal internet engineers. Tens of a million engineers can use this, not like only blockchain engineers in the past. And third but not least, everybody's talking about the uh, kill application. So we believe the micropayment would be the upcoming key application. So we have every pay as the uh, micropayment solution that will facilitate this happen. That's great. Thank you for such a great background. So you're working on a more scalable, customized token solution. And as you mentioned, there are a lot of problems with Bitcoin and Ethereum. And we all know that Ethereum has scalability issues and cost mm -hmm. of the gas to run. So those are the problems in the industry. How is every token doing with this solution? How does your scalability look? And is it easy to create tokens? Yeah, of course. So uh, regarding the scalability, there are two sides. So when we look at the uh, confirmation of a transaction, it took like um, more than um, probably more than 20 or 30 minutes on Bitcoin mainnet, and then seven minutes on Ethereum if you pay highest transaction fees. So for us, it's about uh, less than two or three seconds if you use our micropayment solutions. That's really pretty much like the Alipay, WeChat Pay user experiences in China. That's going to bring the massive adoption. And then TBS, transaction per second, is another indicator that is crucial as well. So Bitcoin is only, it's only supporting like seven transactions uh, per second and then Ethereum 20. So for, for us, we have achieved 8,000 uh, at, uh, at the end of October, and then we're going to push to 10,000 by the end of this year. 10,000 translate to uh, equivalent uh, uh, capability of uh, Visa or uh, Alipay dealing with normal days today. So that's really a uh, highly commercially ready uh, platform. Um, regarding the uh, transaction fees, I think one of the uh, key issue for Ethereum application is that in the past, you have to use crypto ETH as the gas fee for end user. So that's killing a lot of people. Why? It's high entry barrier. Only like 25 million people, they own ETH, they own crypto. The vast majority, they couldn't use Ethereum application, not at all, right? They don't have the cryptos. So for us, we create a platform that any user, you don't need to pay the gas fee on, on the business side is paying for all the gas fee. So think about it. we are using a, for example, WhatsApp or Telegram today. We download for free. We send message for free. That's the internet user experience people get used to. So all the applications based on every token blockchain is offered a similar user experiences. That's what we give to the market. That's great. Sounds like you guys are making great progress already and you're nearing 10,000 transactions per second. That's huge. Right. So it's important to have a lot of applications on your blockchain so to have people using them in the real world. So sure. I understand that you guys have EveryPay application. Can you speak a little bit about EveryPay? Sure. Um, as we mentioned, uh, EveryPay is the, uh, the first uh, commercially ready uh, token payment uh, protocol or a solution that uh, people can issue their own tokens on every token blockchain and use every pay as the micropayment solutions. So the beauty about every pay is not only the scalability we mentioned before, it's also you can use any existing devices like a normal scanner you can see in any convenience store or like Walmart, or you can use any post machine NFC payment integrates our system. So you only do software upgrades and you use the existing devices to do crypto payment. So that's another uh, low entry barrier for using integrating our system. And also people love to issue their own tokens as well. For example, we got a Malaysian partner. Uh, they just signed a strategic partnership with us uh, two months ago. So they're going to issue their own stable coin on every token public chain and use every pay in their offline merchants. That's great. So 
Is it being used mainly in Asia right now, or is it an international effort? And how are you guys expanding through marketing strategy? Sure. Uh, public chain is always a global. It's a global thing. It's, it doesn't have to be Asia at all. So um, we just mentioned Malaysian partner because it's one of the largest partner we we, we currently have. But we have uh, business partners not only in South Asia but also in Middle East, in Africa. Uh, we got one in South America as well. And uh, this week I'm flying to Australia to meet our business partner out there as well. So. But there are some uh, developed countries probably it's even much harder for, for us to talk to the business partner because uh, the uh, regulations out there are much more strict. And uh, the old money, I mean, the old like, financial system, like the banks, they, they definitely are a huge uh, obstacle to, to, to the new uh, crypto payment. So that's why we started from more like the emerging markets first. And then hopefully we, we, we enter the more developer countries. That's great to see that you're expanding into the developing countries as well. So what do you guys have coming up on the Every Token Roadmap that we're going to see in the next six months? Sure, sure. We can look at it uh, uh, in a couple of ways. So technically, we are going to push our CPS to uh, 10,000 uh, by the end of uh, this year. Currently, we have 8,000. And then uh, we are going to also uh, work on giving a more user-friendly uh, interface to the developers that are going to develop uh, applications on every token public chain. And on the business side, we are expanding uh, uh, more like a global base, as I mentioned, some of the key regions to you. Uh, we, we have to implement really, although we signed a strategic partner agreement already, but we have to go to the merchants one by one, uh, do the software upgrade for them one by one, and educate them how to use it, and also give the incentives to the end users for them to switch to like traditional fiat payment, to crypto payment. So that's the business side we have to do. Uh, on the uh, investor side, we are definitely looking for more strategic money. Uh, 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 currently, we are talking to uh, some of the more strategic money as well. Uh, so in the uh, in in May we finished like the cornerstone rounds uh, as tokens. So at that time we have lots of big names, uh, token investors like Finbush Capital. Um, but we are lo more looking for uh, strategic uh, investors, more who has, uh, for example, the fintech experiences and who has the fintech network that can integrate our system more easily, that can help us expand more quickly into the market. That's great. Sounds like you guys have a lot of stuff on your plate. So yes. if people are looking to get involved with the community, follow along with the progress of the roadmap, and see this expansion in your mainnet, what's the best way to get involved with every token or just to learn more? Sure. I would always say uh, our homepage, everytoken.io, would be the best way. Uh, but of course, definitely uh, you are going to see our, all of our social media channels on our homepage as well. Uh, Telegram, uh, Reddit, um, Facebook, uh, everything out there, YouTube, yeah. And also uh, for developers, we have a special uh, designed developer channel as well that you can see on the homepage. And uh, for every page, our Q application, we also have a special channel as well. We are uh, refurbishing our uh, page for, for every page because we have a lot of uh, business activity going on uh, using every page. So we're updating them uh, on a daily basis. That's great. Awesome. Uh, well, I'll leave the links to your platforms in the description box below. And that's all the time we have for now. But I'm looking forward to speaking with you again as you get near to the 10,000 transactions per second mark. Uh, we'll do another follow-up interview, see how every token has grown and how the project is flourishing. So thank you, Brady. I really appreciate you taking the time to do this interview with us. Thank you. Thank you so much. Yeah, I look forward to show our project running on spot to you. I mean, in Vancouver, hopefully. Yes, awesome. Thank you, Brady. Until next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.